Choosing a right thesis project is one of the biggest tasks for final year architecture students. My faculty once told me, you should not choose the topic based on what you like. And that got me thinking, if it is not about what I like, then how do I choose a thesis topic? What really makes a great thesis topic? How do you know if it will be impactful? Well, I am there to break it out for you today. Whether you are stuck on choosing a right thesis topic or worried about managing your timeline, I got it covered for you. In this video, you will find lots of checklists and if you watch this video till the end, there is something for you to download. And of course, yes, I'll be sharing my own experience along the way. So let's dive in. We will go step by step just like we designed. So the step one will be how to choose the right thesis topic. Identify what does your city or region needs. Is there any need for green spaces or any public transportation hub is poorly designed? Look at the challenges around you and think how architecture can provide a better solution. Research global trends. It's important to keep an eye on global architecture trends but do not forget to localize them. I researched film institutes globally before deciding what unique twist I could bring to Nagpur. So ask yourselves what problems you can solve locally by getting insights from an international project. One topic few students worked on a lot past few years was COVID centers. As COVID left a global impact, there were very few centers and this was a very good pick for students to design it. The third point in our checklist is check feasibility of the project. Once you find your thesis topic, ask yourself this question, is it feasible with the given timeline? Can you gather necessary data or is there any live or book case study available? The next point is very important. You should always consult with your guide. Run all these ideas with your thesis guide or a faculty to ensure that it aligns with the academic standards. You should have a strong reasoning of why are you choosing this topic and the previously told three points will definitely help you to give an answer to your faculty. Which brings us to our next step, setting your program and understanding the requirements. In our college, when our thesis guide was selected, we were given a detailed program of how many elevations, sections and plans would be needed. They also mentioned the scale of the drawing and whether a 3D or a physical model was needed. So here's a checklist to set your program. First point is understanding the scope of work. Clarify how many drawings like plans, elevations, sections, what scale, and what kind of reports you need to provide to finish your submission. Usually the faculties provide a detailed program at the start of the last semester. This will definitely help you to plan your work ahead of time. Point number two, know the submission deadlines, which is very, very, very important. Make sure you plan your calendar according to the timeline given by your faculties or your college. Point number three, which I previously told, get familiar with the scales and the kind of format you need to submit. This will help you to avoid last minute surprises and I know students have not focused on these particular things that led them to submit the whole project again. Which brings us to the fourth point of this checklist, clarify presentation requirements. Make sure you find out if you need a physical model or a 3D model or they require them both. I decided to go with a 3D model because it was much easier for me to make and I could generate multiple drawings from that 3D model. Number five, regularly consult with your guide. Same as the previous checklist, consult with your guide to stay on the right track. I met my thesis guide weekly to stay aligned with the program and the timeline. I remember telling my thesis guide that no matter if I bring any drawings or do not bring any drawings, please, please motivate me so that it will help me to get energized and do better. Your guide plays a major role throughout your thesis. Sometimes they yell and that can be discouraging. Try to have a good rapport with your thesis guide because when you go out in the field, you will find such difficult clients as well. And this is a perfect example for you to prepare. Which brings us to step three, starting early and planning ahead. I know you must be thinking when is the right time to start the thesis. My thesis submission was in April. And guess what, when I started, in September and hence I'm making this video in September so that you guys can see it and start early and if you have seen my previous video the time management you would know 
why it is necessary to start early and if you have not seen this video you can find it in the card here starting this early gave me a lot of time to do research and go to all my life case studies without any stress here's how you can plan your timeline effectively and there's another checklist first point as i said start early with the research for my thesis i did three life case studies one was ftii pune second was whistling woods in mumbai and third was national school of drama in delhi and boy it required lots of permission and travel planning how to get permissions to these institute is all together a different task i had to write multiple emails send letters to them maybe call to their admin house to get the permission i went there i shot the content i understood the requirements and then i made this chart comparing all the requirements from each and every live case study which is also mentioned in the black book you can find that in the description but you have to make sure you choose a thesis topic where you can have a live case study either one two or maximum three live case studies and you can also do certain book case studies to understand the requirements better i vaguely remember but one of my batch mate chose a topic of prison it was really hard for her to pick up a live case study but it was one of the unique topics and i really liked it which brings us to the second point maintain weekly schedule even if it was not necessary for us to go to the college every day in the last semester i made sure that i would go weekly to the college and understand the requirements talk with my guide and prepare a better plan point number 3 is break your thesis into milestones here's how i planned my timeline by february we had to submit a single line plan and by mid march we had to submit a plan an elevation and sections and a basic 3d model breaking it down into such steps help me stay organized which brings us to the point 4 and it is important be prepared for revisions everything was going according to the timeline until february hit my guide consulted a senior professor and he suggested that i should change my concept altogether and suggested me to adapt a concept from raj rewal the connecting courtyards this sudden change threw me off the timeline but i knew the input was valuable so what do you do when your plans get disrupted so i was very furious with the change that time but the key was being flexible i went back to my drawing board i adapted to the situation worked on all these drawings plans elevation sections and by mid march again i could submit a double line plan this all happened because i managed my time really well here's a tip for you revisions are part of the project and they can come at unexpected places if someone suggests a valuable change do not get furious like me embrace that and change it it will definitely make your project much better i hope you like this previous checklist Do not worry there is something for you to download at the end. Step number 4 is working with software and tools. It's a bit technical now using right software. Whether you love it or hate it software is a very important tool for your thesis. Back then we have those advanced tools like Rhino and Grasshopper and 3D Max but I chose to use AutoCAD, Lumion, Photoshop and SketchUp. I know you all know these tools but since we are giving a checklist Here's a quick breakdown. AutoCAD you can use it for your technical drawings. It's precise, versatile and can handle the detailed plan sections and elevations you will need. SketchUp is of course perfect for quick 3D modeling. You can also work on 3D Max or if you know Rhino or any advanced softwares you can use that. Working on Lumion for walkthrough and then on Photoshop for sheet presentations were our go-to tools. But you can also use the software called D5 renders. you can also use illustrator so it's up to you which software you like you know and the timeline you have and you can work according to that but do not feel pressurized of using all these softwares because someone else is using it it's okay if you do not have that kind of skill work on the softwares which you have skill on that will help you much better the next step is very crucial and very important creating your sheets and models you will need to compile everything in visually appealing and a professional manner so here's another checklist plan your sheets layout decide the number of sheets you are going to prepare and what each sheet would display i created 10 to 12 sheets covering the different parts of my project some in large plans some sections some elevations and also added some 3d views second point is to maintain the consistency use consistent font colors and have a typical style throughout your sheets 
to make it look professional make sure you have a sleek title block mentioning your college the sheet number the north and the scale of the sheet point number three is highlighting key features emphasize on the most important parts of your design use diagrams use renderings use sketches use annotation to show all your drawings in details number four is creating your model we have already talked about it but when you create it make sure it aligns with your design and explains the peculiar areas of your design number five is allocate time for review make sure you have extra time on your hand to refine your sheets and your model and all the revisions that are needed fresh eyes can catch a mistake you might have overlooked which brings us to our last step preparing for the final viva Woohoo! we went through all these five steps it's time for the final viva you have put all your hard work now and it's time to present your thesis i felt super confident because of all these five steps i followed but still then i had to face a small hiccup there was one faculty in the jury panel who was not really fond of me because i skipped all her classes in the fourth year she threw me off by asking the questions that my drawings are not to the scale but I immediately remembered and I recollected that I have followed all my scales according to the program because luckily I have double checked, triple checked all my drawings. The external jury loved my design and I was a topper of my class. Not bragging but just telling you guys. So here's a practical tip for you, double or triple check all your drawings before you go to your thesis jury because a slight mistake will threw you off and there's a slight chance that they will call you next year at the end of it all thesis is not just a project but it's a culmination of learnings of all the five years to call yourself an architect so here are my tips start early stay organized and be adaptable to the situation this was the key to my success i still have one small regret of my thesis that it was not selected for the Miyasa competition. But now I have to say that the experience was valuable. After my graduation, I uploaded my thesis walkthrough on YouTube. It's still there, you can go and see it. The channel is different. But when I uploaded it, there were loads of emails from students, not only from India, but from Pakistan, Bangladesh, and even Philippines to ask my drawings and understand my thesis. The journey might be challenging, but remember every architect before you have walked down this path. Stay focused, keep your passion alive and seek for help whenever required. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching this video and staying till the end to learn something from my learnings. If you need any help, do let me know in the comments. Let me know what kind of thesis topic you are choosing and if you're finding it difficult to go through all these details, there's a link in the description for you to download something. Here's a list of all the checklists I have told in the video in that PDF document. You can download and use it for yourself. Make sure before you go like this video, share with your friends who are also preparing for their thesis and subscribe to our channel. Make sure you hit the bell icon so that you don't miss when we upload any new video. Till that time, stay hungry, stay foolish and do your thesis properly. Bye.